Former U.S. Senator David Perdue is considering running again for office in 2022, this time against Senator Reverend Raphael Warnock. Emory political science professor Dr. Andra Gillespie joins us now. Dr. Gillespie, first of all, did it surprise you? No, it doesn't surprise me, um, you know, especially since Rev uh, Senator Warnock won in a special election um, and Senator Perdue lost pretty narrowly. If he were going to get back into politics, uh, this would probably be his best option. So it's not surprising that we would see um, an experienced former senator try to seek a another term um, after, uh, after a senator who won a special election. Talk about the difference in this matchup. Of course, he was... Uh campaigning against now Senator John Ossoff, but he would be going against Senator Warnock this time around. Yeah, what I suspect Senator Perdue is is weighing is the idea that uh, the Warnock Ossoff wins were somewhat exceptional. That people, uh, you know, had really strong feelings because of the coronavirus pandemic, uh, because of the divisiveness of of the Trump presidency. And I think he may be viewing the 2020 election as an outlier. And we don't know the answer to that question yet. And so he might view 2022 as a more normal election, where he might think that Republicans are a little bit more competitive. And Reverend Warnock Warnock would be vulnerable in that particular case. So in that respect, it might be best to kind of liken it to when Doug Jones won in Alabama in 2017, but then lost in 2020 when it was a more normal election cycle for the state of Alabama. So time will tell uh, whether or not uh, Georgia is going to remain so uh, so competitive that Senator Warnock, uh, you know, can hold on to his seat or whether or not this was a Democratic blip in 2020. You talked a lot during the election cycle about the Trump factor and of course Senators Purdue and Leffler went in 100 percent with former President Trump even backing that Texas lawsuit to overturn Georgia's election results. How does it change the dynamics without uh, President Trump being in the picture this time around? Um, well, I would imagine, barring any change um, in attitude and in rhetoric from Senator Perdue's part, that he might enjoy the support of former President Trump should he win the Republican nomination uh, for the seat in 2022. So, you know, the big test is whether or not President Trump's endorsement has the same power and the same impact uh, as a former president that it had when he was president of the United States. And I think that the jury is still out on how influential his support was. I mean, we can talk about individual cases, but political scientists think about that in a in, in a more macro sense, mm -hmm. thinking about it in the aggregate. Um, I think the other issue is, you know, while Trumpism is, is likely, you know, uh, around and will be around for the 22 cycle, I think it becomes a question of whether or not President um, Trump is a lightning rod or whether he uh, can actually uh, repel people because of new things that come up between now um, and November 22. So we'll just have to wait and see. In his statement on Twitter, former Senator Perdue said Georgia is still not a blue state, even though both new senators are Democrats and President Joe Biden won the state. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I agree with him that Georgia's not a blue state, but Georgia's not a ruby red state either. And that may be sort of the calculation uh, that uh, Senator Perdue and other Republicans have to consider. Um, it looks based on uh, previous election cycles where Democrats were gaining on Republicans that Georgia's becoming more competitive. And what I suspect is getting ready to happen, but I'll wait for the data to confirm it, is that we're in for a decade where they're going to be really close margins in races and where Democrats are going to win some races and Republicans are going to win some races. So so uh, Senator Perdue can't rest on the laurels that Georgia of 2021 is like the Georgia of 2008 or 2004 because that Georgia doesn't exist anymore. Well, 41 days after the election, we're talking about the election again. I guess it's like a never ending uh, election cycle here in Georgia. Uh, really appreciate your insight as always. Dr. Thank Lesley. you. All right.